Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor, bringing you another video on how to raise your vibrations so you can live your best life. So let's talk today about vampires. First of all, I will say that I'm having a little bit of computer issues. So I've got my camera here, but my computer is so much lower. So I've got some notes that I'm going to be checking and it's going to seem odd that I'm going to look up and down and up and down. But hopefully this is only a day or two and we'll get back on track. So let's talk about vampires today. So we as people who have experienced a lot of trauma, who were not taught to have boundaries, who had parents who had very porous boundaries, who have uh, codependent tendencies, we likely have either experienced vampires in our life or have the potential to attract energy vampires in the future. And so we really wanna get intimately familiar with what are they, what do they look like, what sort of behaviors do we want to be on the lookout for? And how do we protect ourselves or prevent that energy from coming into our lives? So over the next couple of days, I'm going to do a couple of videos. We'll talk about energy vampires today. We'll talk about protection, how to protect yourself. We'll talk about codependency because that comes hand in hand with this type of relationship. So keep an eye out for some of these videos. They're not the usual... Um, uplifting, encouraging messages that I like to deliver, but I do find that this is very common in our community and it is something that we have to address so that we can be prepared and be forewarned so that we can be protected and protect our energy because protecting ourselves is not just for ourselves. It is for the people we love, it's for our family, it's for our community, it is for what we are here to do. So it is for a purpose. So I like to say that we are assembling the new earth construction team. You are made perfectly imperfect for a purpose. There is a reason you are here. Everything about you was made specifically for that intention. And so to, to allow ourselves to be hurt or to be sucked dry is actually a detriment to the collective whole and to your purpose and to what you are here to do. So you not only need to protect yourself for yourself, but also for your energetic family for our community, for the world at large. Okay, so what are energy vampire, vampires? Energy vampires are people who drain our energy. And I want to preface this conversation with, I do not encourage demonizing energy vampires, narcissists, anyone of that nature, that ultimately at the end of the day, we all are here for a reason. We all are created with a purpose. They are still human beings. We still, um, have been instructed to and asked to give them love and respect. It does not mean at the detriment of yourself, and that is where we need to find the boundaries today. So they are still people. They behave the way they behave because they are coming from a hurt place. I like to say that no one person ever acts out of pure malice, that it's always or usually most often coming from a place of needing to meet their own desires, needing to meet their own needs, I should say that many times they were wounded as a child, that they did not feel safe, seen, heard, cared for, or loved, that they have needs that were not being met and they found unresourceful ways to meet those needs. So in no way am I encouraging at any point in this video that you are mean or disrespectful or harmful to the other person. That does again not mean that we are required to self-sacrifice that there is a boundary there, right? So people who drain your energy, they may do it intentionally, they may do it unintentionally. Sometimes they are a friend, sometimes they're a coworker, sometimes they're a partner, sometimes they are a sibling, sometimes they are not people that we can cut out of our lives completely. And so again, we have to be aware they are people too, they are human, they are hurting, they have hearts that desire love the same way ours do, and so we need to really consider uh, what our relationship is to them and how we create healthy boundaries and dynamics in that relationship. Um, they still deserve love and respect just like anyone else. So we just have to recognize our role in the dynamic. So here's the other part of it is they're not the bad guy because we don't want to be in the victim triangle. We don't want to be the victim. We also have a responsibility for our role in attracting them that at some point we may have been codependent ourselves. We may have so deeply desired a relationship that we weren't willing to acknowledge the red flags that told us this relationship is unhealthy. We may have put up with this toxic behavior for an extended period of time, far longer than we should have, self-abandoning, overgiving, um, self-sacrificing, not showing up for yourself, 
is is your role in this that we play a part in the reason why these people are attracted to us the reason why they're in our lives for an extended period of time is because we allowed it and because there was a certain level of um, healing that was needed in our lives to ensure that the relationship remained healthy okay um, characteristics of a person who has vampiric tendencies we'll say that um, very often most often I have seen it comes with the victim mentality that they they may have a martyr complex they overgive they self-sacrifice just so that they can complain about it and and let other people know what a good person they are and look at poor me I should I should be taken care of or you should feel bad for me there's very often a lack of accountability a lack of a responsibility taken for their role in the behavior for the consequences that uh, will come from their behavior from the um, impact that they have on the people around them and a, a lack of commitment to change and that is one of the biggest issues that I see is we can have these tendencies we can make these mistakes which is fine as long as we acknowledge the the need for change as long as we acknowledge that that is not helpful for anyone involved in the in the dynamic and that there is a need for change and a need for um, not just acceptance but aware that right the self-awareness that is required to say this is not a resourceful behavior I'm committed to change um, they can be very charismatic they can be very charming and oftentimes they want to use their their charm to um, to get out of a problem to to solve a problem they want to charm you into solving the problem for them and um, that again is taking uh, very little responsibility for themselves and and manipulating truthfully usually they're involved in a lot of drama they're going from problem to problem to problem there always seems to be some sort of issue um, you may even find that there is a resolution to a drama and within minutes or hours they've jumped to the next thing what's the next problem right um, yeah I would say in my in my life there was just something that comes to mind and I'll share it without indicating who it was but the divorce was complete they were free to move on um, everything had been settled custody all that everything was in place it was as, as if there was no problems and then literally within minutes they jumped to I'm not sure my daughter is my daughter that my daughter might be um, parented by someone else and so <laughs> I just thought oh my gosh are you kidding like can we not have five minutes of peace um, so yes that would be an example of going from one thing to the other um, they're often competitive or one-upping there's there's just an innate sense of imbalance that they constantly don't feel enough and so they're constantly looking for that validation that they are enough and so if um, you have something great happen for you then they have to have something even better happen for you uh, for them if you had an accomplishment they had a better accomplishment if you had a problem they had a bigger problem um, so they can often um, make things about themselves right in that example where we may be celebrating that uh, there's a big win we may be reached a big milestone um, they can't really stand having the attention off off of them and so they've got to talk about how that how that benefits them or how that slights them or how they have a bigger problem that we should be focusing and, and solving um, many times it's you know it's an a grab for attention um, I, I even had an experience where someone needed to constantly be pointing out look here look here look here look here it was dizzying like when you're driving and they're constantly trying to say they want to direct your attention and your focus and and again it's it's not always intentional that they don't always understand that they're doing this or why they're doing this that it very often can come from a very subconscious place because we're dealing with subconscious wounding and programming um, let's see they often use your positive aspects against you so if you are a generous person they will take too much from you if you often feel sad or guilty for some other person you know for you know the, the impoverished or for the wounded um, then they will learn that they can make you feel guilty and so they will try to guilt trip you um, they will ask you to do things for them if you're a very giving person they will ask you to do things for them to the the point of exhaustion where they have taken too much um, they will monopolize your time your attention your focus they're often late they're not respectful of time or they will talk so much they will take up so much of your energy and time it will make you late to the next thing 
Um, like I said, they are codependent. Um, here's kind of the catch-22 is usually both parties are codependent, which is why people stay in this type of dynamic and why they continue to allow these types of things to happen. Um, they may be overly critical or a bully. They may uh, intimidate or manipulate. It's all subversive, subconscious behaviors where it's it's not... Um, something that they're they're not comfortable just having a direct conversation being upfront and honest about what it is exactly that they need and I often find just from my own experience that many people who are um, exhibiting these behaviors are doing so because there is an underlying belief that the need will never be met there is never enough energy there is never enough of anything and so they can't articulate I, this is what I need from you could you please you know, meet me halfway or, you know, I'm feeling lonely. It, it bothers me when you leave. Um, you know, can you give me some reassurance before I go? I'll, you know, we're getting into attachment styles a little bit here, but that would be too vulnerable. It would be too risky and scary, especially since they know that it's not going to be enough, that it's never going to be enough. And so we have to kind of dance around um, this feeding um, that has to come from the other because they're not willing to do the work that is necessary to feed themselves. Okay, that is the list of characteristics. Now we get into the good part. What do we do about it? My favorite, favorite, favorite answer to this question is no. <laughs> Just say no. No is a complete sentence. You do not have to give an explanation. You do not owe them anything. There is no justification required. And that's another sort of hallmark of this type of behavior is if you say no, they want to know why because they want to um, understand why you're saying no so that they can counteract or argue. They want to convince you that your reasoning is not justified and you should be giving to them and supportive to them and be in service to them. No is a complete answer, period, end of story. I said no, thank you, no thank you. Um, if you have people who are not related to you, who you are not required to be in proximity to, um, and, and they don't respect the no, that's when a block is necessary. I love the block feature on Facebook, I love it on my phone, wherever I need to go. If you are not uh, respectful of me and my energy, it is a privilege to be in my space, to be in my energy. I am the decider of who gets to dance in this realm. And if you are not respectful of me and mutually, um, I don't wanna say mutually beneficial because it's not a, it's not a, uh, a conditional loving relationship, but rather, if you are only taking and you are taking to the detriment of the other, then there has to be a boundary required. And that means sometimes I will block you. Um, we put up walls, limitations, and restrictions um, in many different ways, whether it's emotional or physical or digital, um, it doesn't matter, but a boundary can be both literal and um, subjective. So remember not to give in, that if you, <laughs> if you have proven that you are a person who can be convinced of something, if your boundaries are not firm, if you had parents with porous boundaries who then taught you to have porous boundaries, they then also see your porous boundaries and will continue to push on that. So don't give in. If you give them an inch, they will take a mile and they will continue to push and push and push in many different ways to see how they can um, break down your barriers. Um, don't agree to spend a long time with them. Don't, you know, if you're, if this is a coworker and you're constantly getting caught at the, the water cooler, um, you go a different route, get a different um, water cup, you know, find coffee somewhere else, whatever you need to do to avoid that interaction. Um, if unfortunately it, or fortunately it is, you know, a, a situation where it's a spouse or a sibling or relative that you can't really create that much proximity um, between, if that is distance between, I guess is what I'm trying to say, um, then you want to start looking at spending time for yourself in either a, a secure location in the home or spending more time outside of the home so that you can give yourself that space to recover, recuperate, regenerate, because really the key is here, they're taking life force energy from you. And we have to be able to regenerate and to stay grounded in who we are and not allow our souls to be sucked dry where we, we start, to, start to feel a sense of losing ourselves and not really sure who we are anymore, not really sure what I want anymore, not really sure what I think anymore. Um, and that can really take a toll on us. 
So depending on your situation, find a way to create as much distance between yourself and them as possible. Um, remind them they are capable of solving their own problems. So really start to notice when they're they're asking for things. I you know can you pick up somebody? Can you buy me groceries? Can you walk my dog? Can you can you can you please? Start to say no, no, thank you. You know, if you choose to say one, say yes one out of ten times, that's great. But remind them, you know what? I helped you yesterday, and I think today this is probably something that you'll be able to solve on your own, right? You can do hard things is a really great thing to say for kids who tend to have that vampiric tendency, although that is just part of the the childhood condition. Um, but it is again important to start to teach them early on. You can do hard things. You can solve this problem. It is not my job to solve your problems. In fact, when we solve people's problems for them, we actually become, um, oh gosh, what's the term? We are <laughs> enabling them. We are enabling them to not only remain vampiric, um, but also to to perpetuate their victim mentality and their belief that they can't do this on their own. Remind them it is not your job to solve their problems. That's a really key factor here. Um, another form of boundaries is is the amount of the amount of information you share with them. So keep in mind when we're constantly sharing. Oh, I you know I, I had a difficult experience and that made me feel sad. That made me feel tired. I'm feeling um, drained. Things of that nature. Um, it is opening yourself up to them, and in some cases, some vampires will use that against you later. They will use it to manipulate you, they'll use it to guilt trip you, um, so you really want to be careful about how much information you're sharing, and when we're dealing with them, the best way to, to sort of protect yourself from an uh, engagement standpoint is to ask questions, and, and in a sense, you're asking them to give you information instead of you sharing information. Um, Watch your physical and facial cues that if you show up powerful and strong, um, that will project an era or an aura of, of strength and power. And there's a subtle subconscious message that is sent that says, don't mess with me. And I'll say what comes to mind when I bring this up is learning to live in Chicago, right? So a, a young girl from a small town in Wisconsin moves to the big city to, to go to college there. And there was something about my demeanor that would attract people. Um, it was kind of, it kind of felt like a, a moth to a flame where I would get sort of the, the homeless or, you know, the, the not quite right um, would really be drawn and attracted to me. Um, I would often have my bike stolen, my car broken into, my apartment um, tried to be broken into. And, and there was, there was something about my demeanor. And I remember um, you know, talking to a guy about this and, and he mentioned that you have to, you have to project street smarts is how he put it. And what he was indicating was more of a physical projection of I've got my shoulders back. I've got my head high and I see you, right? I'm going to meet you eye to eye. And I'm going to say, I see you. I'm watching you. I'm aware of you. And I'm going to keep watching you even as you pass me by. And what that says to them is that you're aware, you're prepared, you're not scared, and you're ready to act. And so <laughs> we're, not, we're not talking about predators in downtown uh, the city of Chicago at 3 a.m. Um, like I was dealing with, but we are talking about people who are looking for the slightest indication of weakness. They are looking for a prey. And if you have felt that you were... Um, uh, you've been a target of, uh, let's say, scammers or predators or narcissists or people who are just generally out to take and not concerned for your well-being, then we definitely want to take a look at what does your demeanor say? What are you believing about yourself? Because as within, so without. So we have, we have these beliefs that I'm not enough, I'm not worthy, um, you know, I, I should settle for this guy who isn't quite right for me. Um, we are sending out that frequency, that emanation, that vibration that says, I'm not enough, go ahead and, and um, give me just a little breadcrumb because I'll probably settle for it. And so we really want to look for what are the physical, facial expressions that also contribute to that. And of course, as Tony Robbins says, if you want to uh, change the, your state of being, change your state of mind, you change your state of being. And so your, your physical projection is also part of um, the vibrational message that you sent. Okay, 
Oh, we did it. <laughs> Funky camera angle and lighting and all sorts of stuff, but we are here. I am happy to show up with you again for another video. Hopefully we won't have the same issues tomorrow, but if so, you know, Amazon's usually a two-day delivery, so we should have it fixed pretty quick. All right. I love you guys. I will see you on the next video and uh, please do make sure you subscribe, share, comment, um, and click this button to subscribe and this button to check out the next video, which is picked just for your preferences. All right. Take care, my friends. Namaste.